A very common rigging question is how to automate the shoulder bone of a character. The shoulder in humans can move on its own, but it also involuntarily rotates up or down as we rotate the arm up or down. In this video I'll summarize all available rigging solutions and I'm going to show you how to set up the one that I believe is best. You can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. So here are the three solutions that I found with their pros and cons. Something important to keep in mind is that the arm can be in IK mode or FK mode. Number one, you may have seen the video by Royal Skies where he demonstrates his solution for shoulder automation. It uses a complex driver expression. The solution uses an IK arm and I believe it can only work in IK mode. So this is a nice solution, but it is a little bit complex and it only works in IK mode. The second solution comes from an underrated YouTube channel by Max Jung. This technique also only works in IK mode, but compared to the one by Royal Skies, it is much easier to set up. Later in the video, I'll actually be showing you the technique by Max Zhang with my personal modifications. So both of these techniques only work in IK mode, and that is not a surprise. When using IK, we are able to make the rotation of the shoulder depend on the movement of the IK control, and that allows us to avoid a cyclic dependency. But in FK mode, no matter how you approach it, the rotation of the shoulder is dependent on the rotation of the arm, which results in a terrible dependency loop. I spent a lot of time trying to find a way around it, but I couldn't. If someone can find an FK solution for this problem, I would be so happy. But for now, I consider this problem unsolvable, at least when using default Blender tools. There is one FK solution for automated shoulder, but it requires a separate add-on, and that is RBF nodes. I recently made a video about it, showing precisely how to set up an automated shoulder in both IK and FK. So this solution is awesome, but it does require an add-on. Also, the add-on itself is not exactly simple. You're going to need some time to learn it. And finally, you'll need some time to configure the RBF solution. So if you're interested in the RBF solution, I'll share links to the RBF videos. You'll also find links to the videos by Royal Skies and Max Zhang. But next, I'm going to give you my interpretation of the Max Zhang technique. Okay, since this is an advanced topic, advanced tutorial, I have already prepared my basic armature and set up some basic IK. So I just have a simple IK, uh, no automation yet. So I'll show you how you can set it up and you can adjust the technique to your personal rig. So let's select the shoulder bone and go to edit mode, press shift D and duplicate the bone and then switch to individual origins and scale up this bone to about this length, so somewhere around the position of the wrist. This is a temporary bone, you'll see why I'm using it in a second. Then take the IK control and duplicate it as well. Switch to vertex snapping. Then grab this bone, hold control and snap it to the end of this temporary bone. And that was the only purpose of this bone. Now I can select it and delete it. Let's rename this bone to MCH shoulder target dot L. And on the other side, I'll make it dot R. So next, I'll go to pose mode, select this new bone, shift select the shoulder bone, press Control Shift C and give it a dumped track constraint. Now, this bone affects the orientation of the shoulder bone. And the next step may be obvious to some of you. We need to connect the movement of this bone to the movement of the IK bone. The way Max does it in the original tutorial is to use a copy location constraint. So select the IK, shift select the new shoulder target bone and press Control Shift C and choose copy location. 
and then go to the bone constraints and change the target to local space to local space. So now moving the IK moves the target bone and the shoulder bone is tracking the target bone. So that is the basic setup. With this default setup, you may find that the shoulder is a little bit too active and it raises a little bit too much. So what you could do is to select the target bone and reduce the influence of the copy location constraint. And that will make it follow the IK only halfway. And so the shoulder will not rotate as much. So here I was thinking of showing how you could use drivers instead of this copy location to gain a little bit more control over the behavior uh, of this target bone. But this setup is so beautifully simple and it just works. So I'll leave it like this, but there is one thing that I do want to improve. And that is if I select the shoulder now and try to rotate it, I am completely unable to rotate it manually. But in reality, some independent rotation of the shoulder is possible, should be possible. So here's how to fix it very simply. Go to edit mode, shift D, duplicate this bone and right click to cancel the movement. With individual origins, scale up this new bone a little bit and you may want to rename it. I'm going to name it MCH shoulder. L. As you probably know, MCH bones are mechanism bones or automated bones. So this new bone will keep the automated behavior and the other shoulder bone, which is the original shoulder bone, will become independent. Um, let's confirm this and actually copy this and paste it on the other side. It's unfortunate that the names do not get synchronized, but anyway. So let's go to wireframe view and select this shorter bone, go to pose mode and remove the dump track constraint. Then in edit mode, with this bone selected, shift select the longer MCH shoulder bone, control P and parent it with keep offset. And let's go back to pose mode, move the arm and you'll see that the automation still works. And that is because this new MCH bone is automated and the original shoulder bone is parent it so it moves and rotates with it but if i select the original shoulder bone and rotate it i'm able to rotate it manually and this should give us the best of both worlds we have automation and the possibility for manual tweaks if we need them and it's not just about manual tweaks but you know the shoulder should be able to move on its own a little bit as a final touch you could add a limit rotation constraint to the mch shoulder bone Switch it to local space. You can enable the rotation gizmo and switch orientations to local. And that way you can easily see which axis you're working with. So the up and down rotation of the shoulder is the X axis. So I'm going to enable it. And if you set minimum to minus 30 and max to 30, that would be good default values to get you started. Of course, you can now raise the arm Select the MCH bone and tweak the max value if you think that it's going too far. And then also lower the arm and tweak the minimum value if you have to. Then the forward and back rotation is the Z axis. So also enable Z axis and give it minus 30 to 30. Set an extreme pose and tweak the values and adjust them to your liking. So this limit rotation constraint simulates the limited range of motion of the shoulder. So now you should know how shoulder automation can be achieved. Please click like, subscribe, and if you're serious about learning rigging, check out academy.cgdive.com because I'll be sharing even more cool stuff there.